And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll try and throw for it with Roethlisberger. They'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryer move. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. And that's a big pickup on the first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense, they can't get the stop here. Now a first down carry for Harris. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. Try to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. And we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical downhill running. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. A give to Harris, and he's gonna be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, but it sets up second and goal. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Now it's Roethlisberger. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Buda Banker with a pick. And the Cardinals are going to take over at their own 11-yard line. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points. No matter what, at worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. carry for James Conner. And not much here as he'll get it to the 11, maybe the 12-yard line. Tackle made there by Chris Wormley. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. An option handoff given to Connor. And a short three-yard pickup gets him up to the 15. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football, and now zapped right back in the other direction. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Now they were intercepted the first time they had the football, but now they get it back and it's still 0-0. And because of that, 
You know what the thought process is? Interception. What interception? It didn't really happen because they gave up no points. So go back on the attack. Go back and run the offense you believe will be successful. Find your playmakers and give them the football. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Now Roethlisberger to throw. Complete to Washington. That catch good for five. It's third down. It's got to be so tough having the ball in the middle of the field like that, knowing that a linebacker is just waiting to make a big tackle like we just saw. No, no doubt about it because offense coordinators love to call plays to send receivers into the middle of the field. And linebackers, they want to naturally discourage those plays from being called. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of the and down he goes. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. And they won't get a chance to bring this one back. It goes out of bounds, back near their own 20. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. They've been playing the field position game thus far. No score, second quarter as they come up on first and 10. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Murray. Finding Ertz again. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Throwing on first down is Murray. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Murray again, this is Connor. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and 10. Murray now. Green brings it in. Give him nine there on the first down completion. The Cardinals forced to burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Throwing again on second down, Murray. Flush to his right. That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. On first and 10, here's Murray. Escaping the pressure right. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. A gain of six there on first. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. And we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football. It's something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. 
No reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. as the second half gets started. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and 10. Murray's throw into the hands of Kirk. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Murray now on first down. He's going to air it out deep for Green. And a high throw there as this is knocked away down to the ground and incomplete. Well, you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Murray. And he'll go right back to green, but this time it's complete. And all the way down to the 24-yard line. A huge play there for Arizona. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Throwing again, Murray. Flushed out right. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. James Conner there to make the grab. And the Cardinals take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Prater for the extra point, and the lead grows to 10 0. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Here's second and ten. Here's Roethlisberger. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Touchdown! Zach Gentry, 75 yards. And the Steelers are able to make this a close game again. 
Well, that's pretty impressive, Charles. It's one thing to be an elite speed wide receiver and have all that yards after the catch into the end zone, but from your tight end? Yeah, you don't get that very often. What you're describing is more like a Tyreek Hill, a Devontae Adams, and Antonio Brown. You're not talking about a guy that lines up or can line up in line and look like an extra tackle on running plays. He took that bad boy downfield just like he was a scat back. Before the game, he told me, I'm going to have a zinger or two today. And I was like, oh, a zinger or two? I guess that's a zinger, right? That's a zinger. Ready to go with their next drive. And at the line, the Cardinal offense. They were able to extend their lead with an opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter, but that just got matched a moment ago. So we know that what they discussed at the half worked. Now, what are the counters to that, right? You don't just run the same things over and over. Some do, but many will also show something and then come back with something else to keep the defense off balance. So the big play gets them across midfield now for first and 10. Murray now to throw. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. First down, Murray. Polluting the pressure right. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game. Instead, they're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. A good action to this point in the third quarter, just a three-point game, second and ten. Throwing now is Murray. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range, so now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. An important play right here, third and 10. And I would expect pressure here. Flush to his right. Zach Ertz has it complete. They'll run here with Connor. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They'll look to run with Connor. And he will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. James Connor, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cardinals push further out in front. Extra point good by Prater. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. They find themselves down 17 to seven as they start this drive first and 10. Well, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. To throw on second and 10, Roethlisberger. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off by Marcus Golden. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. Boy, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And, Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes 
the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees because oftentimes those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. On second down, Connor looking for space. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And just nowhere to go for Connor. Defense gets to him, and they mark him short. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. And able to find Kirk complete. But he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. So a moment to catch our collective breath after the fourth down conversion. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal to throw it's Murray and that is caught touchdown Cardinals James Conner there to make the grab and the cards use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six an important score there, CD, and now an important extra point because it would make it a three-score game. Love the map there, and at this point in the fourth quarter, look, we all need next-gen stats, right? We all use them, but we don't need them here, do we? Because that means it's almost a certain victory. Crater for the extra point, and that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Looking to throw again on second down. Roethlisberger, quick completion here to Johnson. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Ben to throw again. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Jordan Phillips in there to get him for a loss of three, and it will be fourth down. Like that? Like 30? Bang out. Bang out. Bang out. Bang out. 
Here we go. It's Roethlisberger on fourth down. Open man completes it to Claypool. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. It doesn't matter the distance. You stop to get it done, as you noted, and they did. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. It's brought in by Harris. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Easy work. It's easy work, and it's coming again. To throw again on second down, Roethlisberger. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Najee Harris, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Extra point now by Boswell. It's up and good, so they claw back into a 24-14 now. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. Then the Cardinals' hands team able to secure the football. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. Alex Highsmith there on the tackle. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> You've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. third down it's Connor and he is going to have the first down and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Brandon they're still in the lead but momentum certainly been going the opposite direction so to me that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence and you're right they need to stem the tide a little bit that certainly helped. So it's a win here for the Arizona Cardinals, and they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half to put this one on ice. And I know a lot of people watching this one were thinking to themselves, I'll bet halftime was really interesting. Probably took the paint off the walls with some of the words that were said. <laughs> but I get the sense that it was much more of the adjustments they made. They came in with a game plan that we saw that didn't work in the first half. They made the adjustments necessary, went away from that, and then they got it together, got a spark, and then took off. It's really nice to watch in the second half. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com.
With that, we sign off from Heinz Field.